Let's all worship together, shall we? Stand with us as we raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise a hallelujah louder than the unbelief. I raise a hallelujah. My weapon is a melody. I raise a hallelujah. Heaven comes to fight for me. seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Now already I found myself, uh, uh, you know, when you're in a 30-day th routine, you become, some things become a habit. And this would be about the time where I hit the pause button and got another cup of coffee at home. <laughs> so if you're watching online, maybe you'll hit the fast-forward button and uh, 
skip me, you know? <laughs> I trust you won't do that. But it's good to be together here tonight in the house of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It's about time. Praise God. Um, for devotions this evening, I'm going to read from Psalms 139, verses 1 to 6. Now, very familiar passage. i um, going to only read the first six verses. Um, I was at the eye doctor this past Thursday, and uh, I was firing at questions at him. I was the last patient for the night. I got my money's worth. Um, one of the questions was, is why do I got to use these? I'm only 54. I said, yeah, that's what happens when you get old. You need glasses. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> sign of maturity. Um, but the first verse here, oh, I'll read all six of them. Oh, Lord, you have searched me. You know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you know it completely, O Lord. You hem me in, behind and before. You have laid your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. In another translation, the first verse says there, O Lord, you have examined me. Yes, my eye doctor examined me. You know, look into this machine, type in a few things, and I'd fire a few questions at him, and then he'd get distracted, and, and it took a, you know. Sorry, Mervyn, I took too much of his time. Um, and another machine. Again, more examine, more examine. 45 minutes of examining my eyes. Just to tell me I'm getting old. You know, the Lord knew that. The Lord knew all this stuff. Didn't have to do a thing. He knows what I'm going to say, and that's what's crazy. He knows my thoughts before I even speak them. And I sometimes come up here and I don't even know what I'm going to say. God knows my thoughts probably many days ago. I know that. In talking with the doctor and talking about the eye, I said, and look at all the charts and the blood vessels and what, you know, I'm like, what's that do? What's that there? I'm told that I, I'm getting cataract. I, it just, he's like, oh, you're not bad in cataract. Well, what about that? Well, that's this here lens, and it's this. And when I read verse 6, such knowledge, I can't contain it. Too wonderful for me. <laughs> and I said to him, and people say there's no God. Not this fellow. The Lord is my God. The Lord. He's the one that I trust in, that I have hope, that I have faith. And if you don't, you need to talk to someone real soon. Real soon. Hallelujah. And we're going to all raise a hallelujah. Thanks for leading us in that song. That's amazing. Raise a hallelujah. Um, a couple announcements that I'd like to pass on with you. Uh, check your mailboxes. Those are, if you're here on your way out, there's a lot of stuff in mailboxes. Uh, so check, check that out. And also stay tuned for uh, changes in our, the way we worship, how we worship. Um, you know the changes and the, deci the decisions that have to be made yet. So check your email um, this week. Next Sunday's offering uh, goes to the Lighthouse Youth Center. And we're going to watch, is that right? We're going to watch, uh, no, we're not going to watch a short video. Okay. Um, but yes, next Sunday's offering goes to the Lighthouse. So we will uh, be in tune for that uh, next week. Um, prayer request. 
uh, we want to come together as a congregation and pray for our missionaries. It's a tough time for our missionaries out there. I'll just mention them, George Landis family, Charles Smoker family, Randy Umble family, Devin uh, Breckville family. We need to pray for peace and unity in our country, amen? Pray for our elected leaders, local, state, and federal. So let's come together in, in prayer. Would you join me? Father God, it is a privilege to be in your house tonight. Privilege to come to worship together and worship you because you've hemmed us in, you know us. You've created us, Lord. What a privilege to honor you. Lord, we pray for our missionaries. Lord, in this uh, trying time, uh, we pray that you give them wisdom, give them uh, maybe even more opportunities to serve in a unique way, in a wholesome way, and uh, you would get the glory. God, we pray for peace and unity in our country. Lord, so many hurting, so many uh, pieces that need to be put together. Lord, we ask that your hand would be upon that. We pray for our leaders, our local, our state, our federal leaders. God, direct them, give them wisdom that would only come from you. And Lord, as we worship you today, tonight, may it would be a blessing. May we bless you. And I would ask that you would join us together in giving, uh, praying the Lord's prayer together. Would you join me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stand with us once again as we sing about a God, our God, who is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, light in a darkness. Thank you. 
behind and before you know when we sit when we when we rise you know our thoughts from afar and lord we thank you that you know our story you know us intimately and so lord we want to sing your story in response to that we want to sing your story sing with us as we sing blessed assurance
have a story to tell, don't we? About a big, big love. You may be seated. All right. Well, we're going to do something a little bit different than what we've done the past, I guess, just one Sunday. <laughs> yeah, anyway. Forget that. All right. Hey, um, if you're in elementary school, I want you to come on up here, okay? So kind of like stand right there, okay? If you're in elementary school, come on. Come on. You guys look so excited to do this. How about we sing a song for, that's for you guys? How's that? Like a kid song? Like a VBS song? <laughs> All right, well, forget it, Laura, these guys. Yeah, about that. All right, so Cheryl, come on up here. We're going to sing a song that we were going to sing in Vacation Bible School this year, but I think you know it, kind of know it anyway. So let's sing, what's the name of the song? The same power. Here we go. You can. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave. The same power that commands the dead to wait. Put your arms up, guys. Well, hey, you guys, have a seat right there. Oh, sorry, I forgot his lunch. <laughs> All right, here we go. So um, what, what do you have for lunch, Squeaky? Oh, he said, open it up and look inside. I wonder what he packed for lunch. A banana. Really, Squeaky, a banana? That's your favorite food. Really? Okay. <laughs> yes, that is all I give him. Yes, that's true. Okay. Well, it's, it's because that's your favorite food, Squeaky. So, yes, I know, I know. And you like lots of bananas, and I only packed him one. So, he's not real happy about that. Well, have, have you guys ever um, had a lunch and, you know, maybe you traded something at school, f you know, in your lunch to get something else? You guys ever done that? Yeah, it's like you traded a sandwich away and, you know, to get maybe some cookies or something. Did you guys ever do that? 
Yeah, Pastor Jesse doesn't share with me either. So it's tough. Yeah, anyway. Well, you know, there's a story in the Bible um, in John chapter 6 about a, a little boy who had a lunch and he had five loaves and two fishes. And you guys would like to eat that, wouldn't you? Blake's like, yeah. Everybody else is like, nah, I'm not sure. No, you wouldn't like to eat that. Oh, okay. Yeah, you just like bananas. Yes, ripe bananas. Yes, I know. Well, anyway, the story is about this little boy who, uh, who had this lunch, and Jesus was talking, and there was like thousands and thousands of people there, and no, I don't have an exact count, Squeaky, but the Bible just says there were thousands of people there. And so Jesus was talking, and yes, and they got hungry because it was supper time. And so they were, you know, they were thinking, hmm, what are we going to do for, for food? And you know what? They found this little boy. No, they didn't steal his lunch. The boy gave him his lunch. Okay, Squeaky, they didn't steal it. Yes, I'm sure. Okay. Anyway, they... Uh, the little boy had just, you know, five loaves and two fish. Now, how many people do you think that could feed? Yes, one little boy. That's right, yeah. And so, I mean, what do you think Jesus could do with five loaves and two fish? <laughs> no, he didn't eat it, Squeaky. No, he, he didn't do that. He, he did something else. You know, he, he blessed it, said, God, thank you for the food, and he fed all those people. Yeah, all those people, I'm sure. What's wrong? Well, yes, it's a miracle. Of course it is. And they had 12 baskets left over. Oh, no, they didn't go and sell the baskets, Squeaky. They, uh, but they, they had lots of food left over. And you know what, boys and girls, sometimes, it, it, you know, we look at ourselves and we think, we don't have much to offer God. You're like, what do, what do I have to offer God? You know, I'm only nine, I'm only 10, I'm only, you know, however old you are. You know, what can I offer God? But you know what? God can take what you have and do something awesome, just like he did with that little boy's lunch. Yeah, Squeaky says, so, so offer God something. Yeah, so think, what can I offer God? What can I do? And God's going to use it to bless lots of other people, okay? You think about that. Think about what you have to offer God, okay? Because I know you guys have talents, you have skills, you guys are creative. And you know what? If you offer God that, good things will happen. Even though you might think, I don't have much to offer God. But he can take it and do great things and bless lots of people. Squeaky says, okay, time to be quiet. All right, so you got that, guys? All right, offer God, no matter how small you think it is, offer it to God and he'll do great things. Yeah, Squeaky, it's time to go back into your box. No, it's not quite bedtime yet, all right? You guys can go back to your seats, okay? Yes, I'm sure. I'm very sure. All right, here we go, Squeaky. Well, one of the questions that I have been hearing from people is, you know, what in the world is God doing with all this stuff that's been happening? You know, what, what do you think God is up to? And then, you know, on top of the coronavirus, we had all the civil unrest in our country, and it's like, man, what, what is happening? In fact, I, I heard uh, last week that Finland closed their borders so that no one is allowed to cross the finish line and go, come on, humor me anyway, come on. <clears throat> you know, and, and I've heard this, you know, they've been calling this the novel coronavirus. You know, we have this novel coronavirus. So I, I asked Pastor Jesse, I said, Pastor Jesse, why do they call this the, the novel coronavirus? And he said, well, Steve, sit down. It's a long story. And, and then he also told me, 
He also told me that, Steve, now is not the time to surround yourself with positive people, okay? Please don't do that. So I will take him up on that. That's why I hang around Pastor Jesse. (laughs) But anyway. (laughs) But, you know, there's a lot of questions about, you know, what in the world is God up to? What is God trying to get across? What is God doing? You know, and not only with the coronavirus, but, you know, what's been happening in, in our own personal lives? Some because of the virus, some because of other things. You know, what is happening? And, you know, what is God trying to do? Well, let's take a look at what God is trying to do. Let's uh, begin with a a word of prayer. Our Father, we ask that you would speak to us through your word. Father, use your Holy Spirit to teach us. God, may we have ears to hear. May we have an open heart. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, for many of us, our lives have been interrupted by the coronavirus. And for some of you, our lives have been interrupted by other things. Um, I think of Ken Sumner now dealing with colon cancer. Um, you know, other people uh, that I'm friends with, you know, his wife left him and it's like, now what? And, you know, <laughs> our lives have been interrupted in so many ways and some of it's really tough to deal with. You know, what, what are we to do? I came across this quote by C.S. Lewis. And uh, it, it really helped me to put things in perspective. It's, he wrote this. The great thing, if one can, is to stop regarding all the unpleasant things as interruptions of, one, of one's own real life. The truth is, of course, that what one calls interruptions are precisely one's real life. The life God is sending one day at a time. You know, what a great reminder. You know, as followers of Jesus Christ, you know, his plans, those things that he allows in our lives are, are not interruptions to to sidetrack us. They're not interruptions to to put us in a waiting room. They're not interruptions to say, okay, well, just stay here for a while. They're part of our daily life because God is up to something. And you know what he's up to? This is what God is up to. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Think about that. We are God's masterpiece. Now, maybe some of you are thinking, I look more like a stick figure than than a masterpiece. Right? But God is at work creating a masterpiece in us. God is taking those events, those circumstances, those things that are challenging us, and we think, you know, man, our life just got interrupted, and and he is taking that and molding our souls, molding our spirits to become more like Jesus. Wait, does that sound familiar? I hope so. It was really cool when Pastor Jesse asked me to speak about this, or asked me to speak, my mind immediately went to Ephesians 3.10. And then all of a sudden, different verses started popping into my head, or I, I read them. Here's Philippians 1, 3 to 6. So every time I think of you, I give thanks to my God. Whenever I pray, I make my requests for all of you with joy, 
For you have been my partners in spreading the good news about Christ from the time you first heard it until now. Notice this. And I am certain that God who began the good work within you will continue his work until it is finally finished on the day when Christ Jesus returns. You know, Paul's not saying here, well, you know, that work that God started, you know, I, you know it's really been tough, you know, for him to work on, that, on you. And, you know, Paul's like, you know, I am certain. It's like, I know that God who started that work within you, he's going to complete that work. He is going to make sure that that work, he sees that work to completion because he is creating a masterpiece in your life. Isn't that cool? That is awesome. And you know, a lot of people are are anxious about a lot of things, and some rightly so. Um, You know, (laughs) um, I was on a, a call with executive coach bus company, and they're starting bus trips to the ocean. Um, you can call up executive coach and on Monday or Wednesday go to Ocean City, New Jersey. Well, guess who the most of the people that travel are the Amish. Guess where the hot spot is right now with the coronavirus? The Amish communities. And it's like, yeah, I'm not driving. Nope. I know I can take Monday off, but yeah, I'm not driving there. I'm, you know, there's a lot of things that we are anxious about, but I know one thing. God's working in my heart, in my life, to make me a masterpiece. And that's what he's doing in your life. He is making you a masterpiece. All right. Children, you elementary kids, do you remember what last week's Sunday school lesson was about? Uh, How have you watched last week's Sunday school lesson? Boy, I'm glad I do them. (laughs) Well, I tell you what, this week you got to watch it tomorrow because somebody else is also doing the Sunday School videos with me. So, mm, check it out. Well, in case you forgot, here it is. We talked about uh, Psalms, Psalms, where is it? No, Isaiah 64.8. Isaiah 64.8, where it says, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are the potter. We are all the work of your hands. And I thought, oh, that is so cool because I was going to talk on, you know, we are God's masterpiece and now the Sunday school lesson's on God's the potter and we're the clay and we are all the work of his hands. Then we looked at Jeremiah And in Jeremiah, it says, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. And the word of the Lord was, hey, go down to this potter's house. And I want you to watch this potter making a creation. And so in Jeremiah 18, Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house. And it says, I saw him working at the wheel, but the pot he was shaping from, the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. You see, the the potter didn't chuck the clay. Oh, this is no good. He didn't chuck it. He said, you know what? It's not working out the way I really want it to work out, so I'm going to make it into something different. Something, as it says, that seemed best to him. And Jeremiah was to take that word and tell the people, this is what God is doing in you. He wants to take you and make you into something best that God sees best for the nation of Israel. God 
is working in your life to make you a masterpiece. Now, unlike the clay, the clay doesn't talk back, does it? The clay doesn't say, uh, nope, you know what, I'm, I'm not going to do this. No, the clay doesn't. But you know what we do many times? <laughs> How many times do we fight back? How many times do we say, you know what, I, I don't like this. Or we're saying, you know what, I've had enough. And yeah, we, we fight back. And God's saying, you know what, I'm trying to make you into a masterpiece. I'm trying to work in your heart and in your life. I want to do something great. And you know, when, when we come to a challenge in our life, when we come to those interruptions in our lives, when we, we come to that place where we're faced with, okay, I can either do one of two things. You know, as Yogi Berra says, when you come to a fork in the road, you take it. Right, John? That's right. Well, when we're faced with a decision, okay, okay, I got this challenge, so what am I going to do? We can respond in fear or we can respond in faith. And say, okay, you know what? I don't like this. I'm not sure what is ahead for me. I'm not sure what all is going to be required of me, but here we go. Because God is shaping us. God is working in us. And he started that work, as Paul said to the Philippians. He's starting that work in us. And he's going to complete it. One of the great things about this whole passage where we are God's masterpiece is that that's how much he loves us. That, that's how much he cares for us. And it's just awesome to know that this, this God who is the creator of the universe is also creating in us a masterpiece. He is still creating. You know, the Genesis it says, you know, he created and the seventh day he rested. But you know what? He picked up that creation work again and is creating a masterpiece in our hearts. He's not done. He's not done creating. But that's the good thing that we know that God is taking all those things, all those challenges, all those interruptions to create a masterpiece in us. Because he's the potter and he's going to create something beautiful, something useful so that his name can be honored and glorified. On my way home most nights, I, um, I listen to Johnny and Friends. I don't know if you guys ever listen to Johnny and Friends. It's like 5.15 on WDAC. Well, this past Thursday, um, the program was like, oh my soul, that's it. I gotta remember this. This was awesome. And she spoke from Ephesians 3.10. And it's so good because it's like, whoa, I never saw this. And Ephesians 3.10 says this. His intent was that now through the church, which is all of us, all of us believers, okay? His intent was that now through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Okay, he's like, okay, what are you saying here, Steve? Here we go. We are God's masterpiece, right? God is working in us to make something beautiful. And his intent was that now through the church, us, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly realms. Who's the ruler and authority in the heavenly realm right now? Well, it's Satan, isn't it? I mean, that's what it says in Ephesians 2 too. 
where he is the prince of the power of the air. He's the ruler of the, of the skies. So it's Satan. And you have to go back to the book of Job. And Job 1.6, where was Satan? He was talking to God, wasn't he? And uh, God said, hey, you know what? Did you see my, my man Job down there? Isn't he awesome? And Satan's like, hey, you know what, Job? That's because, uh, God, you know, that's because you give Job all these things. And so God said, test him. You get where I'm going? So those challenges in your life, those things that you're facing, God's working a masterpiece in you. And you know, when you put your faith in God, that God, I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know how much pain it's going to cause me, but I'm going to follow you. I'm going to trust you for what lies ahead. And God's telling Satan and his demons, hey, um, see him down there? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. See, you know, we, we, we put that picture, that story of Job and God and Satan as that happened once. But according to uh, Ephesians 3.10, it's still happening. Because the manifold wisdom of God should be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. Now, I don't think God is rubbing it in Satan's face. <laughs> but I think God is saying, hey, look at that. Look at them. They responded in faith to me. And I am making something beautiful in their life. Hey, look at that. They're trusting me, even though it's really hard. They're trusting me. Look at that, Satan. Hmm. God's desire for us. God's work in us is to be a masterpiece. Because you know what? God don't make junk. Not at all. God only makes the very best. And he loves you enough to work in your hearts to make you a masterpiece. So even though times are tough, even though... Things are difficult. Even though it's got some discouraging news, even though some tough things have happened in personal lives, um, God's, God's at work. He's not done. Because he's making a masterpiece out of your life. Let's pray. God, thank you for loving us so much that you are working in our lives. You are working in our hearts, in our spirit, to make us a masterpiece. And God, that you are going to continue that work until the day Jesus comes. Lord, thank you for never giving up on us. Thank you for loving us that much. So God, encourage us with these words, knowing who we are in you, that we are a masterpiece. And Lord, we want to believe. We believe. Thanks, God, for meeting with us here this evening. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Hey, let me just uh, give you a few things. Um, the community garden is outside. Where am I? That way. Thank you. Thank you, Gene. That, that way. Um, hey, take a look at it. There's a sign up there. Um, and you will notice one thing about the community garden. It's now full of weeds. Um, there's some beautiful plants growing in there, but there's also a lot of weeds. So... Um, if you have time this week to uh, weed that, that would be wonderful. Also, in the very back, by the back doors, is the offering box. If you have brought uh, your tithes and offerings tonight, you may place it there in the box. 
And again, like we did last week, we're going to dismiss you and ask that you will please go outside. And if you would like to talk and visit with one another, um, please do so outside, okay? And God gave us a beautiful night again this week as well. So thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. It's good to see you. And uh, have a great week, folks. See you outside.